Welcome to my new series, Soul Deep on the Road. My name is Leanne Shaw. And now that we are moving to uh, Australia and I've had to pack up my studio, so I am downsizing into a traveler's notebook and we're going to see if uh, we can continue the Soul Deep experiences because there are a lot of transitions that are happening right now and I'm going to take you with me. So we're going on the road together. And we're enjoying some dappled sunlight in this third episode of Soul Deep. I'm starting uh, with a black pen this time, rather boldly, no pencil, um, and I'm drawing a bridge. It'll be probably recognisable to you if you're familiar with uh, Sydney at all. Um, I said it's the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Just a very quick, sketchy, abstracty look at that. And this kind of lighting is going to stick with us throughout this video. Um, I prefer to create in the mornings, and that's when the sun is best in the room, but it's also the time when the eucalypts outside are between me and the sunlight so that's why we're getting all that like lovely dappled light and this one is about arriving in australia and i'm adding some green leaves here um i'm getting a little more literal in this one than in past ones this is not going to be such an abstract piece it's going to have some quite recognizable symbols in it and a eucalypts are a symbol of resilience and they often what goes up in a bushfire but the tree also is the one that comes back from the bushfire. So I have put these watercolour green leaves throughout this page. And in the marks left by the watercolour, um, I have noticed something that looks a bit like a face. So I've decided to pull that out with, again, the brown stibular oil pencil, which is water soluble, finding the eyes and the nose, and kind of merging her in with the bridge there. A few dots and a little bit of rusty red at the bottom there. The ground and I've decided to add that into her hair too. Um, well because my hair is not black it is more of a well it's going gray but it's more of an auburn color. And then I'm moving back in and adding some more blue in there. I started the this page with my nephew and so it was just a little bit of putting down of paint towards the end of our painting session together and so I'm just filling in the gaps of the white page because for some reason I can't leave a piece of page white and um, just building that colour up. The next colour I was drawn to was this opera pink from Daniel Smith. It is a gorgeous pink and I had some more colour in here because I realised I've watered it down a little bit too much. And I'm not quite sure what the pink signifies. I'm going to think about that for a minute. But I've put it here and there onto the page. I think even though this is a cool colour, I'm bringing it in just to brighten this up because this is, this is supposed to be an exciting transition. So I'm bringing in like uh, wafts of this opera pink. And in the bottom right hand corner here, I'm getting literal again and I'm drawing a brown house. This is because I'm living with my mother at the minute and we're looking for a brand new house. And so um, I think this is just to manifest the intention of finding a house for ourselves. And then I'm moving back into just fortifying that colour, making it deeper and richer. Um, watercolours always seem to dry lighter than I put them down and I always have to come back and add in another layer. This is one of those layers that I'll only see and it's a very pale silver grey that I'm brushing over the bridge shape. It's one of those hidden layers and it just adds a little sparkle that I can see. And I wanted to keep adding the sparkles and so you can't quite see so great on this but it's gold um, watercolour paint that I am dripping, splashing onto the cover just to give it a sheen of that divine gold. And while this piece has been full of happiness with the pink and the divine gold, um, I felt drawn to be a little more honest in this painting and I've added some, it's rose of ultramarine like this beautiful purple shade just to hint at the clouds of anxiety as one moves an entire country, um, dealing with all the bureaucracy of getting oneself re-established and that kind of thing. And so I'm just adding that purple in to say, you know, that there are these little clouds that are on the horizon and around the edges um, that are concerns and worries for me. This head now needs a body and I'm going to add that in here. And so I'm building the, her body around the pink um, I had the idea of turning that top part into a scarf and I meant to keep the other pink like wreathed around her as well um, but when I started painting it in I didn't quite work out that way 
And again, I'm reinforcing that pink so you can really see that it's a pink scarf that she's wearing. And then for some reason, I picked up red and made her hair red instead of brown. I'm not quite sure why. I mean, I'm a natural reddish head. Um, and then I added some red into her lips and her nose just to give her face a little bit of more definition. The next color I was pulled to use was this gold color, which I've used throughout all three of these paintings so far. And I meant to keep the pink there, and then, oops, I accidentally cover it up, and so it all gets covered up. I like that there's still some pink that connects her to the small house next to us. And while I don't usually require my portraits to be like at all realistic, I have for some reason chosen to actually put a skin color onto her face. Um, and then I'll just go in and uh, firm that up a bit more. I'm transferring some of that gold color to the house to tie those two pieces together so that they're connected, showing my connectedness to needing a place to call home. And I'm going back yet again with that opera pink. I'm really enjoying how this paper is crinkling because it's making like stripes in my scarf for me without having to try anything. Often when I don't know what else to do in a painting, I will return to a part and just refine that area. And that's what I'm doing here, adding some highlights to her face. And with a lighter green, some white gouache mixed in with the green that I used before, I am adding some more eucalyptus leaves. Again, for resilience, I unfortunately didn't get to record here. And so you can see that the leaves have been outlined in white, and I'm now going around the figure with the brown pencil. I think I have been brave enough to put some black onto her face for the darkest darks. Now lining the house a little bit too. And now that the paint is dried on the page, I'm coming back in with one of my favorite motifs, which is that spiral, that very primitive labyrinth that symbolizes the pathway in and out and also the divine. The piece is nearly finished now. You can see me hesitating. Do I need to add one more thing? Yes, and I add in a pink heart, which turns up red in the yellowy-orange background. And of course, a heart is a very obvious symbol for love, affection, and desire. And she's completed. Possibly not one of my more detailed ones, but done nevertheless. Next is a series of images from the painting, which will give you a chance to see for yourself any images or marks to reflect and respond to this painting. What stirs in you as you look at this painting?
What did you see? See below this video for ways to share your thoughts. If you want to dive into some more Soul Deep experiences, you can go see them over on my website, www.soul-deep.net, and you can check those out there. They're all free, so just set aside like 15, 20 minutes to just you know really sink into the, the whole process that's happening in the video. Um, I think it's quite bite-sized. Or you can subscribe here on YouTube and just click the bell for notifications when the next Soul Deep on the Road uh, episode is up online. So thank you. Thank you for watching.